This is going to be a video about the Colorado Northwestern, but it's going to involve the double O scale Farland that's right behind me. I discovered almost quite by accident that N scale runs on a 12 volt DC sig signal, whereas the double O and HO they run on 16 volt. DCC signals or track voltage. I had no idea, honestly. And I think I've learned the hard way because I think I've burned up a couple uh, decoders and I think I destroyed the lighting on a on the tail of my observation car. It's bad news. I sent it back. I'm sure they'll fix it and send it back to me but it is really my fault and uh, I'd be willing to buy another one if I have to pay for my sins so to speak so quite by accident I discovered this well how do you change it and what do I do with two layouts that I want to run off the same Z21 now I don't know about other controllers I, I looked at the Hornby Select and I could not find because I own one and I could not find any way to make that change change the voltage that is I know that output is somewhat dependent on input but I don't know if you can just change the transformer and uh, have a lower voltage going in with the Z21 it's all through software and uh, it took it took me a while to find in the Z21 documentation it's honestly it's been quite a number of hours spent researching this and trying to figure out what I was doing still don't really know what I'm doing but um, I think I've figured out enough to help myself and perhaps to help you so let's take a look at the track voltage on the double O layout because it's right behind me. Same voltage would be over on the Colorado Northwestern behind the back scene over there. I'm going to have to move the camera for this so hang on. Pretty much garden variety volt -ohm meter. I like it because I can uh, it, it also has continuity checking which actually I use more than anything else but to test your track if you've got one of these be sure you put it over on alternating current and on this it's it just has a waveform over there yeah so if if I put this I'm not sure how I'm going to do this and just to distinguish although we use an AC meter to measure the track voltage which once again is not totally accurate DC sig signal or track voltage is not AC AC looks like this and DCC looks like this there are they are square waves they go it's more like a pulse it's not really a wave it pulses positive and pulses negative just for clarification sake well, let's take a look at the track voltage here 17 hope you can see that well engage needs 12 and I can't have this layout set to 12 so I'm gonna to have to find a way to isolate the two layouts from one another and I'm also gonna to have to remember to change the switch when I change the voltage I can turn them both off the plan I have will allow me to turn them both off or one or the other connected to the Z21 I do have a disconnect 
for the Farland layout. I learned early on, especially with the Hornby Select, that things go haywire every now and then. It's always nice to have a physical disconnect to just kill power to the track in an emergency. And I have one. But I don't have one for the Colorado and Northwestern. So I thought, well, I might as well put one in and have it so that I can control current either to this layout or to that layout. It'll work as an emergency cutoff over there because I'm going to locate the switch over on the on the near the Colorado and Northwestern. Since this layout already has a cutout or disconnect, it won't matter if there if the disconnect is over there for this layout or a second disconnect in line is over there for this layout. It just makes it easy if, if there's a disconnect for both ways and an off switch for both of them in the same place. So that's the first thing I'm going to do today before I do anything else. Okay, next on the agenda here is changing the voltage in the Z21. If you have some other kind of controller well, I'm sure there's a way to do it. Maybe you won't have as much trouble as I did trying to figure out how to do it. Stand by. Got to move the camera again. Here are the instructions for changing the voltage on the Z21. There's a whole series of numbers that have to be changed. This is for in scale. It says 12 up there. And this is for double O or HO which is 16. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate that it can be changed. But you have to remember to change these program settings. The program settings have to be changed. You can't just change the voltage, the track voltage up here. It doesn't do anything. It just returns an error and nothing happens. As I tried that at first but then when I dug deeper because at first I thought oh it'd be real simple I'll just change that and bingo we off we go but the more I got into it um, I realized that there was a, a whole lot more to it than that and I needed like I said before some way to isolate the two so let's just go through the process of changing to 12 volts up on the track First thing I'll do is I'll go turn off the disconnect to Farland. So I'm not subjecting my locomotives and decoders to 12 volts. Hang on. On the Z21, if you go to Z21 settings, it brings up this menu. Don't be fooled. If you slide it up, it exposes these programming numbers. And without those, you can't change it. So, this number needs to become 40. This number needs to become 10. This number also needs to become 10. Now I'm going to I have to send it to the Z21 station. Send values to the 21 station. Okay. If I turn the disconnect back on for this layout, then this track would be a 12. But I'm not going to we're going to go over and measure the voltage on the Colorado and Northwestern. So stand by. I got to move the camera and my gear. Hopefully you can see both of these. By the way, 
when I did this over here over on the other side I put those numbers in correctly but I did not change the main track and program check voltage up here I have since done that off camera so now if I check the track voltage hopefully you can see that it reads 12.2, 12.1 it varies the pulse rate on this electrical signal is like 15 kilohertz so it's uh, very difficult for these meters to read it but that's an approximation we've now established that you can change the voltage and two in scale needs 12 volts okay now the next thing is an isolation capability I'm going to shut this off no sense in running down the battery I'm going to shut that off so, what did I do? Came up with this monster. All these wires hanging out of it. In scale, off, running. O scale, off, running. Now these screws are loose and I, I haven't installed it yet. I plan on installing it over on this side. So let's get after it. Well I, I hope you didn't miss the exciting part. I already mounted the box. I decided to mount it in this orientation so that I can see from the corner there's only one egress or ingress in here and it's back that away. Be nice to have a little bit more room for the in scale project. But you know, you use what you've got not complaining because I do have an end scale project there's probably somebody out there that wishes they had one and doesn't so no complaining is allowed okay I just about got those connected oops doesn't want to stay in there. I keep everything electrical in one spot. This little tray down here has a variety of things. Always handy to have the right type of screw right where you're working. Okay, that should there we go. I don't think I had it in the right place. Okay, that's in there. Well, instead of you watching me struggle down here, getting all these wires hooked up, how about uh, I bring it back after I get it done and I'll tell you what I did.
but you get the idea. We're nearing the end. We're getting pretty close. Just about to the end here. I've got to connect this jumper. Uh, just a little tip here. I don't know if you can see that very well, but uh, that's uh, this pair of wires. I've twisted it together. If you're putting two wires in one terminal, it's always a good idea to twist them together. If you don't, one could pull out. One gets caught by the screw and the other one doesn't. This way, they're locked together. Okay, jumpers are in. I've connected the black wire to the Z21. All I've got left to do is connect the green wire to the Z21. And I'm using these crimp connectors. I don't know. Maybe in a more moist climate they might be a problem, but here in uh, this dry Colorado climate, uh, the flashing light, that's my headlamp. I just glanced around there to look at the camera. Make sure it was on screen. And it is. I've never had one fail. Makes a nice, easy way to connect inline. Connect inline, uh, make inline connections without much fuss. And it saves using one of these things, which are relatively expensive compared to the little crimp on connection. Well, I think I'm going to put a little. Uh, clip on this someplace maybe here just to make it look neat and I think we're ready to go we can test it so see you in okay, a little bit now for the big test voltage is set for 12 so when I flip on the in scale switch here the light in that trolley should come on and it does. So that works. To test the double O scale, the Farland layout, I will have to change the voltage. So I'll have to turn this back off, go change the voltage, move the camera to another appropriate position, and we'll test it on the double O scale. To test the double O system, keep an eye on the Derby Lightweight there, the green one, two cars. When I switch it on, the lights and that should come on. I don't know what else is going to honk, beep, or whatever it's going to do, but that will be my test. Lights coming on and the uh, Derby Lightweight. It's a winner. It works.